Hello everybody and welcome back to Typical City, Eberechi Eze, how good is he, why are Manchester City interested in him and is he good enough? for Manchester City, with Alvarez being linked out of the club as well. That's a, a reason why Eze is being brought up now. And for me, he was a, originally meant when Kevin De Bruyne was being linked with a move out of the club to Saudi Arabia. That's now been shut down by Pep Guardiola himself. The Alvarez links away from the club, rumours that he's unhappy, his missus doesn't like Manchester and she wants to leave as well. He wants more minutes. It's all snowballing into a real transfer saga here with Alvarez being on his way out of the club for a reported £77 million price tag that Manchester City have slapped on his head. Who can afford that, first of all? And second, will he eventually go and will Manchester City be able to persuade Alvarez to stay? And would you rather Alvarez stay or would you rather City be targeting someone like Eberechi Eze, which is why Eberechi Eze has been brought up into the conversation and has most recently been linked with Manchester City. So I wanted to compare Eze and have a look at players in similar positions uh, to him in the top four clubs and see how he compares. Now, the players that are in question are Foden, Odegaard, Alvarez, Bailey and Kevin De Bruyne. Now, the reason Alvarez is in there, he's not really in the same position, is he, to be honest, but he is replacing him. So from a City fan's perspective, I wanted to see what we're getting if we were to sign Eberechi Eze and we were to lose Alvarez. My preference is, by the way, just for the, for the record, is to keep Alvarez still. Uh, because I think he's a generational talent. I think there's a future for him. He's still so young. He's got three years on uh, Eberechi Eze as well. He's got proven uh, goal-scoring record at the top, top level, international and domestically as well. So for me, I'd prefer to keep Alvarez. But Eze's a really interesting one. A really interesting one. And the reason I say that is because I was going to bring in other players because, first of all, that's very Premier League bias comparison that I've given you there. These players that I'm going to go through with their data, uh, which is really interesting and, and a real indication of another player that suits the, the recent history of Manchester City's transfer targets. You think of Doku, you think of Savio, you think of targeting Lucas Pakatai, you think of the signing of Mateus Nunes, Gavardiol, all all of them carry the ball incredibly well. And that's another factor that I'm going to get onto shortly with Eberechi Eze and stat comparisons as well uh, for these players. But I was going to compare Eze to players in the similar positions, but in more of a, a, a similar standard of club. Because, I mean, this is a Crystal Palace player being compared to Manchester City's midfield, uh, Arsenal's midfield and Aston Villa's midfield. First, second and third in the Premier League. Uh, fourth, sorry, Aston Villa finished respectively. So to compare him to a team that f in a team that finished tenth in the Premier League is a little bit harsh. But the reason I haven't done that is because he stands his own. I don't need to. He does really, really well against these players that I'm going to mention here, and the reason why I'm quite happy, I'm more happy. Uh, originally, I thought, yeah, he's a good player, but now I've looked at the data, I'm starting to think this is actually quite a good idea for Manchester City. Um, what do you think, first of all? And, I mean, if you do want to compare Eze to the other football players, that are, are other players for Leicester, I don't know, uh, Madison, I was thinking of, Pakatar would be one interesting one from a West Ham perspective, uh, Kudos of West Ham, Joe Linton, Willock of Newcastle, players of a similar sort of position that I've not done, but, I mean, feel free to go and do it. That's that's exactly what you come to YouTube for, isn't it? A bit of homework. Everyone loves a lovely little bit of homework. That's what you tune into YouTube for, that bloody knob on Typical City who keeps handing out homework for everybody to do. So, yeah, feel free to not do that. Uh, but if you do, I'd, I'd like to know what you found in the comments below and let us know. But let's start with minutes played, the basic stuff. How many minutes have these players played last season? Obviously, as is going to be low down there, he picked up an injury last season. Also factoring in that, apart from Bailey, well, they did have European football as well, didn't they? Uh, Aston Villa. But Champions League football for both Manchester City and Arsenal, of course. Uh, but second from bottom on this list for minutes, just ahead of Kevin De Bruyne, who also picked up that injury, of course, last season. Goals and assists... Uh, versus per 90 minutes goals and assists. And then they're ranked by the per 90 minutes, which is the numbers on the right-hand side of the graphic, which you'll see in every one of these graphics. They're going to be ranked by that. So per 90 minutes, 
Kevin De Bruyne, absolutely ridiculous. 1.24 goal or assist. So more than a goal contribution per game for Kevin De Bruyne since he returned from injury with a total of 24. Eze is down second from bottom with 0.67, but he did get 17 uh, goal contributions last season again. With fact, this is the re that was the moment I thought I think I need to compare him to other players. But when I go further and deeper into the data, is why I've not done it. Um, but you can see clear as day that he's nowhere near anyone on this list for goals and assists. Um, but again, he's playing in a Crystal Palace side, so it's it's not going to be as easy to get goals and assists. Um, raw data wise, seventeen as well, factoring in that he was injured as well. Um, but still, goals and assists per 90, second from bottom, ahead of Odegaard, but Odegaard does drift a little bit deeper, but still, per 90 minutes, is ahead of Martin Odegaard, so that's not too bad, is it? Uh, next, pass completion, now onto the passing side of things, distribution side of things, progressive distance per 90 minutes, this is, progressive distance per 90 minutes is how far you pass the ball forward in yards, per 90 minutes. Kevin De Bruyne, and that's what they're ranked by in this on the outside column, with 246.1 yards per 90 minutes, Kevin De Bruyne passes that ball forward. The reason those that, that data is included on this graphic is because that shows how hard you are, how difficult a pass you're trying to attempt in, in breaking the lines, getting the ball forward. It's easy to pass it sideways. Getting that ball forward is infinitely harder than passing the ball backwards and sideways. Kevin De Bruyne, as we all know, he loves to pass that ball forward. Same with Martin Odegaard, and it's really impressive from Martin Odegaard to maintain an 84.7% pass completion while passing the ball forward over 200 yards per game and still being nearly 85%. That's really good from Martin Odegaard. Kevin De Bruyne is still really good, not bad at all, but he tries the incredibly difficult passes, doesn't he, Kevin De Bruyne? The defence-splitting passes. However, as a is third on the list, which we're starting to see why I've not bothered comparing him to other players because of the he's holding his own once again here, and it gets better as we delve further into it. Ahead of the likes of Phil Foden, Bailey, and Alvarez, uh, in terms of progressive passing distance, in terms of actual com pass completion, I'd like to see that breaking the eighty percent mark. But Leon Bailey dropping seventy uh, below seventy two percent is pretty poor from a pass percentage completion, and he's not even passing the ball forward that often as well. So really loose from Leon Bailey. Alvarez, not very forward passing thinking, but again, that's another example of a bit of an unfair comparison to Alvarez because he's already forward. If you're already forward, you can't pass the ball any more forward if you're already in those forward positions. He's probably the most advanced player on this list, drifting in and out of that number 10 role that he played more often than not sometimes as an out and out number nine though so a little bit harsh to expect him to be passing the ball forward when there's no one in front of him um but still not bad at all from Eze to be third on this list shot creating actions now this is where you get into what you really want from an attacking midfielder for me uh, again, De Bruyne and Odegaard showcasing what they're all about. De Bruyne in particular, absolutely ridiculous. This is per 90 minutes as well. Seven from Kevin De Bruyne um, per 90 minutes, shot creating actions. So this video is about Eze, but what this video has done is showcased that you can see why Manchester City was saying, if you want Kevin De Bruyne, £100 million, please. Because Kevin De Bruyne's don't grow on trees. He isn't expendable. He's very, very difficult to replace that level of talent. Seven shot-creating actions per 90 minutes from Kevin De Bruyne is absolutely sensational. Odegaard, really, really good. Look who's third again. Eze, ahead of Phil Foden. Shot-creating actions. More than Foden, more than Alvarez, and more than Bailey. Making sense why City are interested in Eze. It really is, and it gets better, like I keep saying. Successful take-ons per 90 minutes. This is why I mentioned the likes of Doku, the likes of Savio, um, Gavardiol, Nunes, all players that last season showcased an ability to carry the ball forward, successful dribblers. Now, Eze can play on the wing as well, which is another um, bow to his string there, to, uh, string to his bow rather. I always get that one wrong. I always fuck that phrase up, make a right knob of myself every time. I, I'm going to give up on that phrase. Um, Eze, anyway, top of the list, successful take-ons. Really, really good. Savio was the best in La Liga last season. Doku was the second best in the Premier League last season behind Mohamed Kudus at successful take-ons. 
Eze is showcasing again a brilliant ability to take on a player. And this is what I think City have been targeting because I think Pep has quite simply had enough of facing the low block. And it's quite easy to defend a low block when the ball is being passed in, in, in a, in a semi-circle sort of fashion around the edge of the penalty area. Sometimes you just need that hammer to break a wall down, don't you? Just sledgehammer that wall down. One individual bit of brilliance to just take on a fullback, split the defence wide open, turn the defenders facing the goal they don't want to be facing, all with a fantastic bit of skill. You've got that with Doku, you've got that with Savio. You know, you've got that with Phil Foden sometimes. I mean, he's third on this list. But Eze is comfortably top of this list in attacking midfielders. And that showcases his ability to play on the wing. And he's ahead of Leon Bailey, by the way, in that regard, who's very much a winger uh, who can drift inside as well. But top of the list for Eze, really, really good. Gets better. Carried, carries, sorry, into the final third per 90 minutes. So your ability to take it from the middle third into the final third. Uh, very close between a lot of these players here, so there's not a big difference here. But Eze, second on the list once again, ahead of Phil Foden, ahead of Alvarez. Again, that's a little harsh on Alvarez because more often than not, he's already in the final third. Kevin De Bruyne, top of the list once again. Uh, but Eze, second, carries into the penalty area. So just quickly going back to the carries into the final third, this really showcases the area on the pitch and the, how these stats can be manipulated by what position you actually play. Now, Leon Bailey is bottom of this list. Um, carries into the final third, which shows he's already in the final third. But then the next list is carries into the penalty area where Leon Bailey shoots to the top, showcasing his ability to break the lines and something that uh, uh, similar to Doku, or similar to Savio. Eze's still second, though. So Eze was second on the list for carries into the final third, as well as carries into the penalty area. Being second on both of these lists shows it a versatility, Abilities to carry the ball forward from multiple areas of the pitch. You're not just a winger who can cut inside and, and beat his fullback. You can carry it through the centre of the pitch and into the final third as well. Really good for Meze to be second on this list in both uh, carries into the final third and into the penalty area. And then finally, I wanted to look at the defensive side of the game. And I mean, just to see how well-rounded these players are. Tackles and interceptions per 90 minutes. as a top of the list. Again, really, really impressive from Eberechieze to find himself with two either tackle or an interception per game during the 23-24 Premier League season. Well, all, and across all competitions last season. Really, really good. And it's a, it's a real indication that City, I think the dribbling side of things really stood out to me. I think the passing side of Eze's game could do with a little work. He seemed a little bit loose with his passing distribution. I think the tackles and interceptions really showcases his ability to win the ball back, which is something Pep Guardiola absolutely loves, in particular for that counter-press. Once we lose the ball in the final third, his ability to win it back and win it back quickly would be would be even better. Um, but overall, I think the dribbling ability, the carrying ability is another reason why I think City are targeting so many of these players and simply because Pep's had enough of facing the low block and he wants players that can, can pass the ball as well as break the lines with a cute bit of play from Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden with passing precision but also just yeah, that raw, aggressive ability to just beat a fullback. Do you know what I mean? Which makes for very exciting football for me. And I think City have got a lot, City fans have got a lot to look forward to next season with players that are just going to take on their man. You know, I can't wait to see it because I think City fans have grown a little bit frustrated with Grealish and Bernardo Silva quite often tucking back. And there's a reason we did that back then and it was successfully employed, mind you. Last season was a little less successful and why I think Pep's reverting to players that can carry that ball. Eze fits the bill in that regard, but does he fit the bill for you? Let me know your thoughts, Blues. Is this the right man to replace Julian Alvarez? A very different player to Julian Alvarez, but Pep is clearly going for a different angle with these players. Would you prefer to see Eze over Alvarez, or would you rather keep Alvarez? And Eze, would you like to see City just go for Eze? Add him to the roster. That would be quite interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe to Typical City, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now. 